Hey everyone, thank you very much for, for having us and thank you for tuning into our part of presentation. We would like to uh, share uh, our experience uh, from being regional ambassadors for, for Europe in the, in the IA project. And on the next slide, we uh, listed things that you will learn from, from uh, our uh, presentation. Uh, so, uh, I'm not sure. Next if I'm slide. Still... Yeah, you can go to the next slide. Right. So, uh, we um we would like to tell you first about like why we joined aya then a little bit details of like our journey we will summarize some statistics for european languages we'll give a shout out to the most active contributors so if you are one of them try to find your name on the slide and and finally we'll conclude with a couple of ideas that we have for the future of aya in europe uh, but before we do that, in the next slide, we were uh, um, thinking that we could introduce ourselves. Uh, if we go to the next slide, please. So I work as a senior data scientist at ARM, but my background is in academia. I completed a doctorate program at Cardiff University in computational neuroscience. Then I worked as a research associate at the University of Cambridge. As my job title indicates, I'm interested predominantly in the input to machine learning models. I like working with all kinds of data, temporal and structured, but my first professional and academic um, exposure to AI was actually through natural language processing project. So all aspects of, of text mining are actually really close to my heart. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is David. I'm originally from Lithuania, so I it was like kind of pleasure to also represent Lithuania in a project. So I'm currently ML engineer at Sunrise, like telecommunication company in Switzerland. And yeah, my background mostly associated with like engineering and my main focus right now is like speech recognition and large language models. Next slide. So our journey, we both joined AIA fairly on as, as regional ambassadors for Europe. That was the role that we were particularly excited about as we could collaborate with a lot of communities from, from various European countries, learn about their language, culture, way of work. On a more personal note, coming from the heart of Europe, we were with David as no, not strangers to linguistic diversity. In fact, one of the pioneers of language unification and creator of the Esperanto language, Ludwig Zamenhof, was my compatriot. He came from a city of Białystok, which is located not too far from Polish-Lithuanian border, which was at the time a very cosmopolitan city, where you could hear on the streets languages like Polish, Russian, German, Yiddish, Hebrew, Lithuanian, and more. Esperanto was, well, probably not that successful attempt to mitigate the issue with communication. In 2021st century, English language took that role, especially thanks to development of technology, internet. Still, when you travel in Europe, but, but really anywhere, to truly immerse yourself in a, in, a, in a culture, you really have to speak the language native to the region, as languages, in a way, shape how we think and how we view the world. On the other hand, as we, as we say in our research paper, data sets are foundational to many breakthroughs in modern artificial intelligence. This is a direct quote. Yet most of those data sets are in English. Then it was so exciting to, to work with fluent speakers of languages from Europe to collect more natural instances of instructions and, and completions. Sorry, I, I went here a little bit of a head because first we had to get in touch with those potential annotators and convince them that what we are doing actually makes sense. So we did it through numerous initiatives. So we, we had some social media campaigns. We reached out to research labs and linguistics institutions. We even had some contacts from Welsh government. 
We reached out to some European machine learning influencers that some of you may know from your Twitter and, and LinkedIn feed. And then we organized also European Language Week. In the next two slides, Davidas will reveal the details on specific social media initiatives that we did. Yes, yeah, so Europe, so our region was consists 42 languages, which is like pretty big region and variety of languages. So I'm pretty happy that we have like even not that much contribution, but from very small languages like Luxembourgish or Maltese, which is like very small part of Europe, very small countries that has their own language it was like for me, it was amazing that people find about Aya, and we really, Dominic, tried that people spread the world, spread the world around Europe. And yeah, we I was uh, blocked from some social media that I cannot write any more messages for like a couple of weeks. But yeah, our first initiative when we started was like to show people how to use our user interface how to contribute so we create a short youtube video which is was like pretty good for this project we have like uh, more than thousand views uh which basically you see one time and you don't really see it. you understand how everything is working so that was like our first initiative and uh, next slide and then we have uh and we think like this process very creatively so we create different initiative, uh, like one of them was European week. Uh, I also did like five hours live stream and I just like what I did all five hours is like contributing for Lithuanian language. And it was like very interesting that four people on Saturday morning watch all five hours. <laughs> that was like pretty cool uh, to do this. Uh, yeah, we also speak in different meetups presenting in our countries. For me, I'm presenting in Lithuania and Dominic present in Poland. So I think we did and do a lot of creative things for initiative to attract more people to introduce AYA, that people can contribute and join uh, this amazing project. So, next slide. Right. So I, David has already hinted being responsible for European languages uh, collection was really interesting challenges uh, with, with, with some highs and lows. Uh, for instance, it seemed like annotators engagement in Europe was a little bit lower than in other regions. There's probably several reasons for it. Some more cultural and specific to the countries. We had a lot of conversations, for example, with research leads that are really enthusiastic about AYA to begin with, but that rarely translated to the big uptick in, in numbers. So we mainly relied on our fantastic champions for local languages who are really driving our way forward. Amazingly, this was true for some of the minority languages from Europe, like Irish or, or Basque. But also lately, uh, there's more and more investments in uh, local regional AI in Europe, including local large language models that also require big language corpora. So we had a lot of competition here. For instance, on this slide, you can see the landscape of various Polish LLMs as of December 2023 alone. Still, on the next slide, um, even with those challenges, you will see that we achieved a lot. We are really proud of the role of European languages in AYA. To be more specific, we got almost 12,000 contributions to task one, which was translation verification, almost 7,000 contributions to task two, which was contributing with original inputs, all diligently checked by human annotators. Some languages uh, were really leading the way across the project, like, like Dutch, French, Lithuanian, Polish, Irish, Italian, Portuguese, Basque, but, but also all of the others as every single contribution uh, mattered in the end. So it's a little bit of a shame that we are not meeting in a, in a grand hall in person, because like here, I imagine a huge round of applause to anyone to, who contributed to the success that Europe played in AYA. Dave Das, would you like to add something here? 
Yeah, I want to just say that like all these results is very correlated with uh, our language ambassadors and these leaders who is driving this initiative. So in the next slide, next, yeah, I want to thank basically everyone who's joined Aya and contribute at least that one contribution that was amazing, but I really want to say huge thanks for our like European stars. So most of these people also was involved in writing like the paper. So I'm really glad that we have so strong base of language ambassadors, Mike, Laura, Joe, Borje, Nigo, Oksana, Diana, Elisaveta, Giacomo, Alexandra, Stefan, Ilias, and Dora. These people was like the driving force for different languages in Europe and like these all results really is their results what they achieve we help them as much as possible we together with Dominique also represent our languages me for Lithuanian Dominique for Poland so we together uh, start driving this force and I think we achieve very good results especially I'm very happy about like Lithuanian languages we don't really have any corpus available so this is like kind of first step for us uh into like ai world and creating our own large language models so i think for my language is what's like super important that we release this and that so many people help us to achieve this amazing goal yeah so next slide yeah you want to start family on the future uh, yeah, since we are like so excited about like what we achieved so far, we would like to and continue uh, working on on Aya. So Europe still has a lot of journey to 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 go in terms of you know like creating really multilingual like corpora corpora covering you know all of the languages in Europe. So we help with the that with the publicity that we will get from uh, from now releasing AI data set, we will get even increased engagement and like in the future we'll build maybe AI to zero, which will be even stronger case for uh, for Europe. Yeah, I'm also really happy that like for my language, I have planned to like create this corpora and train like even the small one large language model to show people that, okay, uh, AI could speak in Lithuanian very well. Uh, but we also see other like initiatives around the Europe, also in the Balkans and other countries. So I think in the future, we see that more and more uh, European language models will be trained on some part of IA data sets. So this is like kind of very good job what we did. And I'm really happy that we kind of improve European uh, LLM field. Yeah, so. Thank you.